You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Doctor Who After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Doctor Who After Show. Hey, guys. Welcome to... Oh, wait. No, I'm going to say it right this time. Oh, yeah. Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another Doctor Who wrap-up. Today, we are doing the classic episode, Season 10, Episode 1, The Three Doctors. And this was first broadcast on December 30th, 1972. You guys are dancing. Oh, yeah. I feel like... I feel kind of left out. Dance too, you girl. Dance with us. No, what's that? I'm doing the same dance you yeah, guys are no, doing. Is the, that the Doctor the, Who dance? The, yeah, no, okay. it's the awkward Cyberman dance. Oh, Cyber oh. Dance. Oh, whoa. Oh, God. Oh, no. We're He's getting into a little like it. Metropolis here. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh -huh. Nice. Uh -huh. call you like that? Nice. You like that? Nice. Classic sci fi everyone reference. Loves, everyone loves mm. ger German cinema. German it was one of my favorite movies of everyone. all time. I don't know that everyone does love German cinema. Yeah, no. But I do. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys, so this is um, an episode with three doctors, mm -hmm. one of whom... How many? Three. Three. One of whom was not on the set. One of no. whom I feel like basically lived the life that Keith Richards lives in his wildest fantasies because mm -hmm. he was 67 and looked like he was 129. Oh, my God. He yeah, aged I, so much. He really... and Okay, that sounds mean because the poor gentleman was was rather ill at the time. Yes, yes, he was. So this is William Hartnell that we're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he was the first doctor. Um, he was sick during the filming of this because the original plan was to have all three doctors on camera together. Yeah. Instead, he was he was f filming from a remote location. And shortly after this, he this was his last performance for Doctor Who, and then he passed away. So, it's but sad. he Very didn't. Sad. Well, we were talking about his age, and wow, did not look sixty seven. Do you know what the funny thing is, though? If you look back at at films and television at that time, don't you think that people aged a little more than they do now? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. They tended to look a lot older a lot earlier. Yeah. I guess that's things like health. Mm -hmm. Oh, improved. <laughs> basically. I suppose I don't know. I health mean, but Botox, it, health, it, plastic it, surgery, and cigarette smoking being mm -hmm. cut down. Yeah, I mean, but possibly, but, but, it, but it's it is kind of interesting because like there's so many more toxins now. I don't know. It's just one of those things that hit me. I'm like, why does he look so much older? Does your body almost know that it has a longer life expectancy, and so like drag it out a little more? Mine knows. <laughs> yeah, your body is sentient. Totally. That, that sounds like something out of an episode of Doctor Doesn't Who. Doesn't it? It sounds like that. Yeah, I know what you're going to say. It sounds like their version of the singularity. There you go. Well, speaking of the singularity. <laughs> let's talk about the singularity. Let's talk about that because you know how uh -huh. I fear Siri. No, she it, does. Roth is terrified of the singularity. Approaching singularity. There you yes. go. Yeah. Approaching the singularity. Well, this episode had a different type of singularity. A different type of singularity. Yes. We know. In a black yes. hole. We um, know. But, uh, Still. Let's, let's, let's talk about the episode in general. Like Compared to the other classic episodes that we've seen, it was very it moved very fast. This has been like one of my favorites I think that I've seen so far. Really? I, I have to say it wasn't mine. Really? It wasn't mine yeah. either. I liked Matt. it a lot. There were a lot of good moments for me. Um like I don't know, it just it moved quickly. There was a good cliffhanger on the majority of the four episodes. Omega maybe was a little weak as a villain, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but the he was awake, were high. which yeah. is more than I can say for most of the other people. Yeah, in the exactly. <laughs> it, well, okay, so we give the pass on the sleepiness to the gentleman that was very ill. Right, yes, yes. he can okay. be sleepy, and yeah. he was just on the And, and William Hart, he was definitely reading his lines off of cue cards yeah. just off camera. But I, I will say this. I feel like what I liked about the episode was that it raised some really interesting questions about what the Doctor is and can be and the nature of his ability to travel in time. Because the interesting thing to me was they're like, get them back to their timeline. I'm like, what timeline? Right. Yeah. Every single um, iteration of the Doctor is 
he's in a variable timeline. I mean, he he seems like oh yeah. So it's yeah. interesting how he's beholden to the rules and yet exempt from them at the same time. I liked that a lot. I like that idea being explored. I would like to see it explored in a little more depth now. That'd be mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Well, it, I know it bothered me as soon as they said um, that the, the second Doctor was pulled out of his timeline, and but then the third one wouldn't remember right. that that had happened to him. I'm like, right. eh, How no. does that work? Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Yeah. Um, also, I do have to say this. I did love the second Doctor. Yeah, he yeah. was fun. He was the most entertaining, because the rest of them, I'm going to be absolutely honest here, and I know all classic Who people are going to hate me, but they're just dull compared to the doctors that we have now. Yeah. I mean, they're just, and I know television was completely different, I know it was a completely different style, but they were just dull. He was not. He was nice and, and he w he had the elements of the doctor that we like. He was wacky, yeah. he was good, yeah. he was very mercurial, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. he seemed quite grumpy in some moments, yeah. and he had a temper, but then he'd be doofy and fun. He, he has his recorder. Um, yeah. And yeah, how he I feels love. about his recorder was very Matt Smithy. Totally. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have to say, he's the only one so far that I can honestly say Say, I would watch. Even like, I, Tom I, I Baker. To... Even Tom Baker. I still. Oh, no, I, no, I wasn't Baker. here. I wasn't yeah. here for that one. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, Tom you... Baker was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I have not watched. We'll the Tom get Baker you yet. some Baker, and you'll okay. be like, yes, yeah. okay. 100%. Yeah. Tom Baker was awesome, but I, I will say I agree with you because he also the thing that I liked about him too is that he covered. You know what the doctor does is cover his brilliance with goofiness sometimes, yes. so yeah. that people aren't mm -hmm. don't get hep to the fact that he has a plan. You know. Yeah. And he did that, which I liked and I thought was fun. And like some of the ideas behind. And I will say this, I weirdly liked the very odd in the mind space fist fight. Yes. Oh, yeah. that, that, all right, that, I, that was just insanity. But that to me, that was like one of the most artful things <laughs> yeah. I've ever seen done on yeah. any episode of And Doctor in silence, yes. in silence, yeah. like no music, nothing. It was yeah. a really slow cool motion. choice. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. thought that was great. Yeah. yeah. Even though, I mean, the doctor doesn't fight, but it's okay because it's his mind. Right, yeah. right. That's he, allowed. He, he's fighting. What was the he's line? He's fighting uh, the dark side the of dark Omega's side of my mind. mind. Which, 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 at the same time, <laughs> the dark side of his mind. Didn't the mask kind of bear a resemblance to the one? Um, in the Christmas special after the first se season of the new series, oh, yeah. when, when he takes off the big mask mm, and it's just yeah. this skull-like thing underneath, yep. that to me, I was like, it's that. Yeah, That's where yeah. they got yeah, that Yeah, totally, from. totally. Except totally. That I liked that it was just empty space. I mean, I think yeah. there were some really interesting ideas in this. I like the idea that the Omega was essentially nothing. He didn't exist except for the force of his will and the right. only release was death. I mean, I thought that was like a, a nice metaphor for really hanging on to the ego, egoic version of yourself. Yeah. I didn't understand how a singularity, which is a scientific event, has a room right with like <laughs> glitter well the power of his mind <laughs> made it happen obviously I mean, okay, Rob, when the singularity happens it's going to be accompanied by glitter yeah <laughs> it's going to happen god willing i might get on board then yeah if it is accompanied glitter by singularity. glitter yes and i'm just saying be this because and i actually still have, yes yeah. and i still have glitter on my roth and i went to halloween parties last night mm -hmm. and i'm still covered in glitter but so I, I do think that the that's what you get for talking to Siri all the time. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah I mean, there were <laughs> there were just certain elements to it that didn't so much. I mean, I, for me, the one that I've liked the most so far is Baker. He's been my boyfriend. Yeah. I I will I will marry him and have his babies. But <laughs> that's a strong reaction. Um, that's even, stronger than I expected. Okay, even, <laughs> even maybe that's a little farther. You heard than it here first, folks. Roth likes curls and teeth. <laughs> TV exclusive. <laughs> Before we, we explore that any further, guys, just make sure um, if you guys like the show that you go to iTunes and subscribe. Leave us nice comments and rate us well. We really, really do appreciate it. So, um, yeah, make sure you subscribe. We've got all kinds of great shows. And if you don't just watch this one, we've got Homeland coming up afterward that Roth and I do. So, yeah. Subscribe. Subscribe. Nice. Hey, that was good. That was we did not plan that. I know. You guys did it, and I was late. Yeah, you were and a little I late to the like party. I feel like a loser now. That's okay. That's I, all right. Grump face. <laughs> we, can we talk about the monsters? Can we talk about the monsters? I mean, let's talk, let's about, talk the about, bubble, about the bubble crab <laughs> monsters. I don't know, y'all. I mean, yeah. here's the thing is like, I just really, I really want to get past <laughs> some of the production. Yeah. yeah. You went issues. street there for a second. I don't know, y'all. <laughs> y'all, I don't know. <laughs> I really do not. Yeah, yeah because they're. The thing about these older episodes is like it, it's kind of it kind of gives me this idea that I want to see them not 
totally like remade. People are going to kill me because I know we all hate reboots and things yeah. like that. Yeah. But there are threads of ideas in them that I think are so great that would be served so well by a more contemporary take yeah. in terms of the acting and the production design and, and so forth. I mean, like, the Omega is a really cool character. Oh, yeah. But the problem is, is that he goes, I know. Like, he's very, mm-hmm. like, he's announcing what he wants to do. I and know. His villainy. You got it. Oh, like, yeah. I think the more that we watch it, at least for me, the more that I watch it, this older stuff like back when I was watching all the old Star Treks and stuff like that you start to ex- be more into what it represents and but like those are great because they're ridiculous I yeah. mean because uh, it's yeah. damn yeah. it and this can't be Jim. the same thing well there was I'm one line there was one line why pause Unless he means him some terrible harm. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I wouldn't even buy that from a Shakespearean actor on a stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. I, he's the time lord that invented time travel. No, but that wasn't from him. That was from one of the other time lords. Yeah. But, but still, there's just, there's something about, I mean, for me, like, here's the thing. I started as an actor. I know we all act, so there, there is something about it that, like, that is the one. Do we all? That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. all three of okay. us, yeah. yeah. So I think there's just something that's a sticking point for me about the about this particular style of acting. And I know it's across the board, British TV at this time, a lot of American TV, I mean, different issues, but different style of acting. But I think there are things like, you know, just looking at Joe and... And like she's posing, and oh no, and mm-hmm. oh, and doctor. also, oh. may I, may I, <laughs> may I point out that I was, I, I mean, I really wasn't. She look, she, she wasn't terrible. No, but she didn't have much to do no. other than mm-hmm. run around after the doctor. I want to in the see Muppet, this. as it, as uh, Father Wizard said, in the dead Muppet. Yeah, it just is really. It's sort of a shame, and and we've talked about why, kind of. The, but it's like we're used to our companions our companions, <laughs> um, offering so much and being such rich characters in their own right and offering the doctors this great counterbalance. that mm-hmm. and, and you're just going, why are you, like, here other than to be the girl? Well, once we get into, unfortunately, there aren't a but ton. But that wasn't true with our lady time lord. That's true. Yes, and we'll which see, I did not get to see. We, we will see more of Romana uh, I later love on. love Romana. Uh, unfortunately, there aren't a ton of Sylvester McCoy episodes available on Netflix. Um, at some point, we're going to exhaust all of the episodes that are on Netflix, and we'll have to move on to other ones that are available on DVD and so on. But uh, Ace, who is Sylvester McCoy's companion, is argue, arguably <laughs> the most active and interesting of the classic Companions. Okay, well, so that we'll will to... at least be exciting. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I just had to point that out because, like, I think Matt that... looks like he's so upset with us. Are you mad at on that? No, <laughs> I'm not upset. I just think open mind, everybody. No, well, I mean, and I liked it. Yeah, no, we liked a lot of things about it. I think it's just, I think that. I love the reimagined series so much, yeah. and I think the stakes are so much higher. Yeah, and the acting is so much better. The effects, you know what? That doesn't bother me. But the stakes yeah. in this episode were really high. But they, but the acting didn't reflect but, that. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's, the, that's thing. the problem, is that the stakes were yeah. absolutely really mm-hmm. high, but it doesn't matter if we're not buying when, into it. When the whole unit building gets sucked into the black hole by the by like the yeah, weird but video they didn't effect really creature. Seem like they were that upset about it. I mean <laughs> they're just like, oh no. Um, I, yeah, I think the, pro- the, the the problem is is that if the dialogue and the acting and the execution aren't matching those states, like I said, there are great ideas in these yeah. episodes. Yeah. They're really wonderful ideas, like great sci-fi tropes done in an unusual way, you know, yeah. and I, I appreciate as So for me, that's what I'm getting out of these kind of more than anything else. Okay. But the problem is, is that we are, and I'm trying to get past it, I really am, but that we're so used to something that's so well conceived and well executed. And listen, in the contemporary series, the effects aren't always amazing. No. They're, no. they're sometimes kind of ridiculous. But we don't care, you know, because every other piece of it is so in place right. most of the it's time. It's far more cinematic. Well, then it's going to be interesting when we get the opportunity to watch Doctor Who the movie, which is the uh, 90s take that was a pilot for a series that never got made and it was not made for a reason. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll get into that a little later on once we're out of Netflix episodes. Okay. But So in order not to sound so terribly negative, again, to stress, let's, for let's stress. There, there are many, many elements to this that are interesting and enjoyable and fun yeah. and awesome. There are yeah. just some other things that 
take uh, take it take me out of it and again like the the episode that I've enjoyed the most and I think maybe was the Tom Baker one because it felt the most organic the acting felt the best the yeah. characters felt the most dynamic maybe too it was that even though it was like a, a high concept sci-fi it there were fewer big effects that that needed to be dealt right. with right so it could it, it it didn't let you down because yeah. there was nothing there to really get wrong right yeah. exactly yeah. like it, we didn't end up being in a glittery room that the was script, meant to represent the singularity right, right. The, the the script <laughs> uh you know fit its limitations exactly fit the limitations yeah. of the show's budget right that makes sense i mean look there I, I have to say this because i mean i've been a sci-fi and fantasy fan since i was a little little kid and i read some older sci-fi versus newer sci-fi now there are obviously some classics that are really wonderful however there are ones where I read them and I like I can see all of the things that everyone has built on yeah. that started here but I might look at a book and say okay the only women in it are either sex slaves or um, completely useless right and there may be like and the lines sound way too overdramatic and things like that so you know I'm looking back at like the, what is the beginning of this this show that I absolutely love, and I can see where things have been built on top of it. Yeah. So I do appreciate it for that. Yeah. It's just that there there are certain things that are like, oh no, acting. No. Well, <laughs> and and I think that I think too. I mean, people have an affection for things that were of their youth, and yeah. they're they're really you're not able to look at it, you know, sort of with clarity i i have so there are so many films and television shows that are that i saw when for one reason or another when i was very young that i'm convinced are amazing in my mind but mm -hmm. i know that if i looked at it again today i'd go okay maybe not yeah you know yeah. but to me like whether i was watching it on late night television or however i was exposed to that series you know including like i when i was a little kid we used to watch on, in reruns, we used to watch the old Star Trek, my brother and I. Yeah. And I mean, no, I think we kind of even then knew that right, well, let's start some, some of yeah. the elements that were silly, but we loved it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Here's one thing that I want to talk about, because we love to talk about, you know, the plausibility of a lot of the scientific elements. Yes, on let's the talk show. about that. So, um, getting back to what, Roth, you were saying about the doctor crossing his own timeline and it being variable. Yeah. And we have the Time Lords on Gallifrey who uh, are orchestrating all of this and pulling them out of their respective timelines. But they, if the doctor pops through time at, at any point, they should know all of the Doctor's regenerations. Right. Mm -hmm. Or does time on Gallifrey only move one way? Can you, yeah. can you, are, are you causally linked to only show up there in chronological order? That would be amazing if they had decided that that was a rule and, and then made that a rule yeah. in the world of the show. But if you're making it a rule, to explain, I'm speculating. You know, I'm asking, I mean, what do you think? I think that that's something that would make sense, but my it, get, it didn't feel to me like that that was an active decision that was yeah. made. You know what I mean? Yeah. It feels to me more like that's a really interesting take from a fan to solve a problem. Yeah. But but <laughs> think about this. Like in 1972, we did not have the interwebs where everyone can read up on absolutely everything right, and right. do and hit Wikipedia and go through what time travel and theories of time travel and what string theory is and all of these different concepts. Like you can't. Not that, that if string theory has anything to do with this, but yeah, it was like it has but, oh no, no, I'm to just do with everything. Yeah, well, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I'm just saying in general, like in any sci-fi show, yeah. yeah, like you can't, you can look all this stuff up now. You can read, like you can have a physicist writing all comments and all, but you just didn't have that back then, so you didn't have to really have the same kind of rules. And the expectations that you do now. were lower. The yeah. expectations were lower because n n very few people were going to look it up. And even if people were upset, like they got the details what, wrong. What were they going to write a letter? Yeah, were they right. going to actually take? <laughs> out a piece of paper and a pen ah, yeah. and write a, a letter. letter or a typewriter oh I mean, my god my that's god. just silly people. put a that's stamp on it put it oh, hell to the law. <laughs> Take it damn. to the mailbox. Mm. No, no. Mm. Damn right, sound effects. And even <laughs> uh. exactly. And even if they did, who was to know about it? Versus today, they know that they're gonna get picked apart for every little mm -hmm. thing. Exactly. So some of those logical errors. I mean, I just think it was a cool notion, though. I was like, well, that's kind of a paradox in and of itself, in well, a way. I want to talk about. So the second Doctor meets his future self, and uh, future self. So does the first Doctor. Yes. So. They're staring their death in, the, in face. the face. Yeah. And, like, you have to assume if you're the second doctor, you're like, well, to know 
I know that I will die someday, but I almost know when, or I know that it's coming, and that would like affect you. Like, uh, there's there's something to that that that's very deep, and they don't really get to scratch the surface. It's yeah. just kind of yeah. a couple of lines there, like right when they first meet, and they're like, "So you're you're me? Well, I'm you, and like all that stuff." Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I think the only way. I mean, listen, I, I think that the human and maybe the Time Lord mind, I don't know, the tendency is to deny your mortality at every turn. Yeah. I mean, we all know we're going to die, and yet not we me. live... No, of no. course not. Obviously not. But we live in denial every single day. Otherwise, how are you going <laughs> to kind of function? You know, you can't be thinking about that. Other, then you just turn into Fight Club, and it's mayhem for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Fight Club is fun but mayhem. It's fun mayhem. But I, I mean, it is... I agree with you that I thought that was kind of a missed opportunity, and that's what I'm saying is that I feel like in our world that would have been an opportunity that would have been met. I, yeah. I would hope in an ideal world that would be met because it is. It has to be totally alarming and, and odd and perturbing. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like we talk about Time Lord mortality and do they face it. If you look at uh, how they approach their regenerations, David Tennant is really the only one who feared death. Yeah, right. Who, who? I mean, as brave as he is, kind of ran from it. I mean, so did uh, so did Matt Smith when he knew that he would die. Die. It wasn't a regeneration, but then right. he was going to die. You know, he lived an extra two hundred years running from it. Yeah. Um, but David Tennant's storyline was really the first time that. A regeneration was something that was really scary. It wasn't just something that they knew was going to happen and would happen someday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I know we have to wrap, so I just want to say one thing. I did read today that um, a prequel to the Christmas special is going to air um, on BBC for their Children in Need thing oh, um, on November awesome. 16th. Yes, and uh, it was announced this week, uh, Jenna pointed this out to us, that there is an episode coming up in the second half of the seventh season called Journey to the Center of the TARDIS. Yes, yes, that's right. I forgot I even wrote that story. Okay, so you cool. can find the story on fanhattan.com um, or you can just Google Journey to the Center of the TARDIS, and it was revealed by one of the guest stars um, that we're going to see a lot more of the TARDIS than we ever have before. Which is so awesome. We'll see awesome. libraries and pools, pools. Mm -hmm. and wardrobes, yeah. endless mm -hmm. wardrobes. Yeah, bedrooms. Oh, yeah. Bedro well, Where do I know. they sleep? I know. Where do they, kitchens? Yeah. Yes. And so, um, and we are going to see, there was another, something that Matt Smith and one of the producers did something um, at, I believe, the London Comic Con event. They said um, that we will definitely be seeing more of River Song, so. Great. Dun, dun, yes. Dun, dun, dun. yes, which That's we, we weren't 100% sure sure about but so after the 16th we'll probably our next episode will be about that prequel yes yes if we can if we can yeah. see it yes. on our cable uh, tv boxes next week's episode yes, however will will be another pertwee episode it's going to be carnival of monsters which is actually uh it aired right after this episode so this is the first time we're going to see an episode that is chronologically the next one. I feel like we should have done that for the Halloween episode for now, but oh well. Yeah. Uh, well, watch on it on party. Halloween, uh, guys. Yeah. Watch it on Halloween. There yes. we go. Okay, guys. So you can follow AfterBuzz TV at AfterBuzz TV on Twitter. You can follow me at Jenna Bush B U S C H, like the beer, not the president. You can follow me at J R O C J R O T H C. You can follow me at, at Matt Lieberman, M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. Also, if you live in L.A. and you love live comedy, come out to Danger Room Friday nights Woo! at 8801 Casio Street near Pico and Robertson. Woo! It's going to be a fun time. He will be giving out bubble gum. Yes, yes lots and, of bubble gum. And guys, if you want to watch this again, I'll be posting this on Fanhattan.com tomorrow. All right. Woo! All right, guys. From um, Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.